The Kukatani Tripolian culture is a Neolithic e Neolithic archaeological culture in Eastern Europe. It extends from the Carpathian Mountains to the Dniester and Dnieper regions, centered on modern day Moldova and covering substantial parts of western Ukraine and northeastern Romania, encompassing an area of some 350,000 square kilometers, with a diameter of some 500 kilometers. The majority of Kukatani Tripolian settlements consisted of high-density, small settlements, concentrated mainly in the Sirat, Prut, and Dniester river valleys. During the Middle Tripolia phase, populations belonging to the Kukatani Tripolian culture built the largest settlements in Neolithic Europe, some of which contained as many as 1,600 structures. One of the most notable aspects of this culture was the periodic destruction of settlements, with each single habitation site having a roughly 60 to 80 year lifetime. The purpose of burning these settlements is a subject of debate among scholars. Some of the settlements were reconstructed several times on top of earlier habitational levels, preserving the shape and the orientation of the older buildings. One particular location, the Podjuri site, revealed 13 habitation levels that were constructed on top of each other over many years. Nomenclature The culture was initially named after the village of Cucutani in Iasi County, Romania. In 1884, Teodor T. Burada, after having seen ceramic fragments in the gravel used to maintain the road from Targu from Os to Iasi, investigated the quarry in Cucutani from where the material was mined, where he found fragments of pottery and terracotta figurines. Burada and other scholars from IASI, including the poet Nikolai Beldesianu and archaeologists Grigor Butchurianu, Dmitri C. Butchulescu and George Diamandi, subsequently began the first excavations at Cucutani in the spring of 1885. Their findings were published in 1885 and 1889, and presented in two international conferences in 1889, both in Paris at the International Congress of Prehistoric Anthropology and Archaeology by Butchoriani and at a meeting of the Société d'Anthropologie de Paris by Diamandi. At the same time, the first Ukrainian sites ascribed to the culture were discovered by Vicente Kavoyka. The year of his discoveries has been variously claimed as 1893, 1896 and 1887. Subsequently, Vicente Kavoyka presented his findings at the 11th Congress of Archaeologists in 1897, which is considered the official date of the discovery of the Tripolian culture in Ukraine. In the same year similar artifacts were excavated in the village of Tripolia, in Kyiv Oblast, Ukraine. As a result, this culture became identified in Ukrainian publications as the Tripoli, Tripolian, or Tripolian culture. Today, the finds from both Romania and Ukraine, as well as those from Moldova, are recognized as belonging to the same cultural complex. This is generally known as the Kukutani culture in Romania and the Tripolian culture in Ukraine. In English, Kukutani Tripoli culture is most commonly used to refer to the whole culture, with the Ukrainian-derived term Kukutani Tripolian culture gaining currency following the collapse of the Soviet Union. Geography the Kukutani Tripolian culture flourished in the territory of what is now Moldova, northeastern Romania and parts of western, central and southern Ukraine. The culture thus extended northeast from the Danube River basin around the Iron Gates Gorge to the Black Sea and Dnieper River. It encompassed the central Carpathian Mountains as well as the plains, steppe and forest steppe on either side of the range. Its historical core lay around the middle to upper Dniester River. During the Atlantic and Suboreal climatic periods in which the culture flourished, Europe was at its warmest and moistest since the end of the last ice age, creating favorable conditions for agriculture in this region. As of 2003, about 3,000 cultural sites have been identified ranging from small villages to vast settlements consisting of hundreds of dwellings surrounded by multiple ditches. 
chronology. Periodization Traditionally separate schemes of periodization have been used for the Ukrainian Tripilian and Romanian Cucutany variants of the culture. The Cucutany scheme, proposed by the German archaeologist Hubert Schmidt in 1932, distinguished three cultures pre cucutany Cucutany and Horodosti Foltesta, which were further divided into phases. The Ukrainian scheme was first developed by Tatiana Sergeyevna Pasuk in 1949 and divided the Tripilia culture into three main phases with further subphases. Initially based on informal ceramic seriation, both schemes have been extended and revised since first proposed incorporating new data and formalized mathematical techniques for artifact seriation. The Cucutany Tripilian culture is commonly divided into an early, middle, late period, with varying smaller subdivisions marked by changes in settlement and material culture. A key point of contention lies in how these phases correspond to radiocarbon data. The following chart represents this most current interpretation. Early period The roots of Cucutany Tripilian culture can be found in the star Savo Chorus Chris and Vinca cultures of the 6th to 5th millennia, with additional influence from the Bugdini Esther culture. During the early period of its existence, the Cucutany Tripilian culture was also influenced by the Linear Pottery culture from the north, and by the Bowie and Julisti culture from the south. Through colonization and acculturation from these other cultures, the formative pre cucutany Tripilia A culture was established. Over the course of the 5th millennium, the cucutany Tripilian culture expanded from its homeland in the Prutsirit region along the eastern foothills of the Carpathian Mountains into the basins and plains of the Dnieper and southern Bug rivers of central Ukraine. Settlements also developed in the southeastern stretches of the Carpathian Mountains, with the materials known locally as the REUSD culture. Most of the settlements were located close to rivers, with fewer settlements located on the plateaus. Most early dwellings took the form of pit houses, though they were accompanied by an ever-increasing incidence of above-ground clay houses. The floors and hearths of these structures were made of clay, and the walls of clay plastered wood or reeds. Roofing was made of thatched straw or reeds. The inhabitants were involved with animal husbandry, agriculture, fishing and gathering. Wheat, rye and peas were grown. Tools included plows made of antlers, stone, bone and sharpened sticks. The harvest was collected with scythes made of flint and laid blades. The grain was milled into flour by stone wheels. Women were involved in pottery, textile and garment making, and played a leading role in community life. Men hunted, herded the livestock, made tools from flint, bone and stone. Of their livestock, cattle were the most important, with swine, sheep and goats playing lesser roles. The question of whether or not the horse was domesticated during this time of the Cucutany Tripilian culture is disputed among historians. Horse remains have been found in some of their settlements, but it is unclear whether these remains were from wild horses or domesticated ones. Clay statues of females and amulets have been found dating to this period. Copper items, primarily bracelets, rings and hooks, are occasionally found as well. A hoard of a large number of copper items was discovered in the village of Karbanar, Moldova, consisting primarily of items of jewellery, which were dated back to the beginning of the 5th millennium BC. Some historians have used this evidence to support the theory that a social stratification was present in early Cucutany culture but this is disputed by others. Pottery remains from this early period are very rarely discovered. The remains that have been found indicate that the ceramics were used after being fired in a kiln. The outer color of the pottery is a smoky gray, with raised and sunken relief decorations. Toward the end of this early Cucutany Tripilian period, the pottery begins to be painted before firing. 
The white painting technique found on some of the pottery from this period was imported from the earlier and contemporary Gummel Nita Karanovo culture. Historians point to this transmission to kiln fired. White painted pottery is the turning point for when the pre Kukutani culture ended and Kukutani phase began. Kukutani and the neighboring Gummel Nita Karanovo cultures seem to be largely contemporary. Kukutani A phase seems to be very long and covers the entire evolution of Gummel Nita culture A1, A2, B2 phases. Middle period in the Middle Era The Kukutani Tripilian culture spread over a wide area from eastern Transylvania in the west to the Dnieper River in the east. During this period, the population immigrated into and settled along the banks of the upper and middle regions of the right bank of the Dnieper River. In present-day Ukraine, the population grew considerably during this time, resulting in settlements being established on plateaus, near major rivers and springs. Their dwellings were built by placing vertical poles in the form of circles or ovals. The construction techniques incorporated log floors covered in clay, wattle and daub walls that were woven from pliable branches and covered in clay, and a clay oven, which was situated in the center of the dwelling. As the population in this area grew, more land was put under cultivation. Hunting supplemented the practice of animal husbandry of domestic livestock. Tools made of flint, rock, clay, wood and bones continue to be used for cultivation and other chores. Much less common than other materials, copper axes and other tools have been discovered that were made from ore, mined in Volyn, Ukraine, as well as some deposits along the Dnieper River. Pottery making by this time had become sophisticated, however they still relied on techniques of making pottery by hand. Characteristics of the Kukutani Tripilian pottery included a monochrome X spiral design painted with black paint on a yellow and red base, large pear-shaped pottery for the storage of grain, dining plates, and other goods, was also prevalent. Additionally, ceramic statues of female goddess figures, as well as figurines of animals and models of houses dating to this period have also been discovered. Some scholars have used the abundance of these clay female fetish statues to base the theory that this culture was matriarchal in nature. Indeed, it was partially the archaeological evidence from Kukutani Tripilian culture that inspired Maria Jimbatas, Joseph Campbell, and some latter 20th century feminists to set forth the popular theory of an old European culture of peaceful, matriarchal, goddess-centered Neolithic European societies that were wiped out by patriarchal, sky-father-worshipping, warlike, Bronze Age Proto-Indo-European tribes that swept out of the steppes east of the Black Sea. This theory has been discredited by some in recent years, but there are still many people who adhere to it, at least to some degree. Late period During the late period the Kukutani Tripilian territory expanded to include the Volyn region in northwest Ukraine, the Sluch and Horon rivers in northern Ukraine, and along both banks of the Dnieper River near Kiev. Members of the Kukutani Tripilian culture who lived along the coastal regions near the Black Sea came into contact with other cultures. Animal husbandry increased in importance, as hunting diminished, horses also became more important. The community transformed into a patriarchal structure. Outlying communities were established on the Don and Volga rivers in present-day Russia. Dwellings were constructed differently from previous periods, and a new rope-like design replaced the older spiral pattern designs on the pottery. Different forms of ritual burial were developed where the deceased were interred in the ground with elaborate burial rituals. An increasingly larger number of Bronze Age artifacts originating from other lands were found as the end of the Kukutani Tripilian culture drew near. Decline and end There is a debate among scholars regarding how the end of the Kukutani Tripilian culture took place. According to some proponents of the Kurgan hypothesis of the origin of Proto-Indo-European, 
For example, the archaeologist Maria Gimbatas in her book notes on the chronology and expansion of the pit grave culture. The Cucutani Tripilian culture came to a violent end in connection with the territorial expansion of the Kurgan culture. Arguing from archaeological and linguistic evidence, Gimbatas concluded that the people of the Kurgan culture of the Pontic Steppe, being most likely speakers of the Proto Indo European language, effectively destroyed the Cucutani Tripilian culture in a series of invasions undertaken during their expansion to the West. Based on this archaeological evidence, Jimbatas saw distinct cultural differences between the patriarchal, warlike Kurgan culture and the more peaceful matriarchal Cucutani Tripilian culture, which she argued was a significant component of the old European cultures which finally met extinction in a process visible in the progressing appearance of fortified settlements. Hilfits, and the graves of warrior chieftains, as well as in the religious transformation from the matriarchy to patriarchy, in a correlated east-west movement. In this, the process of Indo-Europeanization was a cultural, not a physical, transformation and must be understood as a military victory in terms of successfully imposing a new administrative system, language, and religion upon the indigenous groups. Accordingly these proponents of the Kurgan hypothesis hold that this violent clash took place during the third wave of Kurgan expansion between 3000-2800 BC, permanently ending the Cucutani Tripilian culture. In 1989 Irish-American archaeologist J.P. Mallory in his book In Search of the Indo-Europeans, summarizing the three existing theories concerning the end of the Cucutani Tripilian culture, mentions that archaeological findings in the region indicate Kurgan settlements in the eastern part of the Cucutani Tripilian area, coexisting for some time with those of the Cucutani Tripilian. Artifacts from both cultures found within each of their respective archaeological settlement sites attest to an open trade in goods for a period, though he points out that the archaeological evidence clearly points to what he termed a dark age, its population seeking refuge in every direction, except east. He cites evidence of the refugees having used caves islands and hilltops to argue for the possibility of a gradual transformation rather than a violent onslaught bringing about cultural extinction. The obvious issue with that theory is the limited common historical lifetime between the Cucutani Tripilian and the Yamna culture, given that the earliest archaeological findings of the Yamna culture are located in the Volga Don Basin, not in the Dniester and Dnieper area where the cultures came in touch while the Yamna culture came to its full extension in the Pontic Steppe at the earliest around 3000 BC, the time the Cucutani Tripilian culture ended thus indicating an extremely short survival after coming in contact with the Yamna culture. Another contradicting indication is that the Kurgans that replaced the traditional horizontal graves in the area now contain human remains of a fairly diversified skeletal type approximately 10 cm taller on average than the previous population. In the 1990s and 2000s, Another theory regarding the end of the Cucutani Tripilian culture emerged based on climatic change that took place at the end of their cultures. Existence that is known as the Blythe Cernander subboreal phase. Beginning around 3200 BC the Earth's climate became colder and drier than it had ever been since the end of the last ice age, resulting in the worst drought in the history of Europe since the beginning of agriculture. The Cucutani Tripilian culture relied primarily on farming, which would have collapsed under these climatic conditions in a scenario similar to the Dust Bowl of the American Midwest in the 1930s. According to the American Geographical Union, the transition to today's arid climate was not gradual, but occurred in two specific episodes. 
The first, which was less severe, occurred between 6,700 and 5,500 years ago. The second, which was brutal, lasted from 4,000 to 3,600 years ago. Summer temperatures increased sharply, and precipitation decreased, according to carbon-14 dating. According to that theory, the neighboring Yamna culture people were pastoralists and were able to maintain their survival much more effectively in drought conditions. This has led some scholars to come to the conclusion that the Cucutany Tripilian culture ended not violently, but as a matter of survival, converting their economy from agriculture to pastoralism, and becoming integrated into the Yamna culture. However, the blithe Cernanda approach as a way to identify stages of technology in Europe with specific climate periods is an oversimplification not generally accepted. A conflict with that theoretical possibility is that during the warm Atlantic period, Denmark was occupied by Mesolithic cultures, rather than Neolithic, notwithstanding the climatic evidence. Moreover, the technology stages varied widely globally. To this must be added that the first period of the climate transformation ended some 500 years before the end of the Cucutany Tripilian culture and the second approximately 1,400 years after.